Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive and in-depth review on some Moviel stainless line copper cookware. We're going to find out if it's beautiful and cooks really well, kind of like me. What? Or if the extra expense and headaches with the patina and the cleanup make it just not worthwhile. I don't know. Let's get started. Okay, so I was on the Moviel website poking around for information on this guy. This is a Moviel carbon steel skillet, which I did a, a different review on when these coppers caught my eye. Now, I've never had a copper pan before, and I was sitting there thinking about why. You know, why have I not had a copper pan before? And the reason is, these things are stinking expensive. This little 2.6 quart saucepan with lid list for about $370. $370. This little 8 inch frying pan lists by itself for about $200. Now thanks to the magic of the internet I found these as a set and for some reason the set only cost $300. So anyway I feel like I got a little bit of a deal on these things. I don't know if it's still a value yet. We'll see. If you were to buy an entire set of these things you could be talking $2,000 or more. So if you're thinking about spending that kind of money and investing in a set of copper cookware, hopefully the things we do today will really give you a lot better information to help you make your decision. Copper 101. Besides its looks, copper cookware is known for its heat conductivity and precise temperature control. It conducts heat roughly 20 times more efficiently than stainless steel, for example. It's also non-ferrous, which for our purposes means that these copper pans will not work on induction, but gas and electric cooktops are good to go. And importantly, copper itself is a reactive metal, which means that you can't cook food directly on copper. And for that reason, copper cookware is always lined with another metal for its cooking surface. These days, your main choices are tin line, which a lot of pros like, and more commonly, stainless steel line for most home sets. Tin has a reputation for being a little more non-stick and is a great cooking surface, but at the same time it's also softer and you can't use metal utensils in it. It wears away over time and most importantly you can damage it with too much heat. Stainless steel surfaces are a little harder and more durable, so I thought the stainless steel lining was a little safer choice for my first copper pans. And regardless of tin or stainless lining, the instructions from Moviel say to never heat an empty, dry copper pan. You need butter, fat, oil, water, what have you. So if you're used to heating a dry cast iron skillet up to searing hot for a steak, or getting a carbon steel pan up to its smoking point to season it, doing the same could actually ruin a copper pan. So never preheat a dry, empty copper pan, and as copper transfers heat so efficiently, never cook on high either. Medium high is a good max. Pan stats and details. Let's talk first about sturdiness and pan weight. Now I'm focusing mostly on the saucepan, but these characteristics are similar for the frying pan as well. For some reason I expected copper to feel lightweight, but this Moviel is startlingly heavy. Let's compare it to the four quart all clad stainless steel saucepan that everyone goes nuts over and wins all the awards. It weighs in at a skosh over three pounds. And even though this Moviel is only a 2.6 quart and visibly smaller, it weighs in at over four pounds. So it's a smaller pan, but a pound heavier. 33% heavier if you're into math. So when you pick it up, it feels heavy and sturdy and it's built like a tank. It's a good booty pan, nice, thick, heavy bottom. Metal thickness. This M Heritage line from Moviel comes in two thicknesses. The product numbers will end in either the number 250 or the number 150 and then have a letter following. The 150 refers to 1.5 millimeter thick pans. The 250 means that the pans are 2.5 millimeters thick and they are correspondingly more expensive than the 1.5s. Now the letter at the end of the product number refers to the material of the handle, which we'll get into in a minute. Now again comparing to the all clad, you can see that the 2.5 millimeter Moviel is visibly thicker. And you can really feel that difference in the weight and sturdy feel of the pan. If you're going to spend the money on copper cookware, I think it's really worth it to go ahead and get that 2.5 millimeter thickness. 
handles. Now the letter at the end of the product number is either an S, a C, or a B. And these letters refer to the choices of handle material. S is for stainless steel, B for bronze, and C for cast iron. Except that it's not pure cast iron, but rather a stainless steel handle with cast iron electroplated to its surface for appearance. And that's the one I went with, based solely on how I thought it would look on my stovetop. The handles are attached with rivets and again feel sturdy. A couple of important notes about the handles. One, they are oven safe. Two, I found that they got too hot to grab after about 10 to 12 minutes of cooking. Much more than that and I needed to use a mitt, so the handles do heat up. And three, when these cast iron plated handles were brand new, I noticed that after cooking for a while, my hands had a slight metallic smell. Now it washed off with soap and water. I've been using the pans for a couple of months now, and the smell has dissipated as I've used and washed the pans more and more, but sometimes I still get a slight hint of metal after I handle the pans for a while. And I don't know if the stainless and bronze handles have the same issue. The lid fits well, it's much lighter and thinner than the rest of the pan, and the main note here is that it only fits the saucepan and not the frying pan. Cooking tests. I've actually had these for a couple of months now and have done a lot of cooking in them. So what I'm going to do is kind of pick and choose some of the cooking tests that I think really show off their pluses and minuses. We'll start with the saucepan first. For my first time using the saucepan, I chose to make some of nature's most perfect food, cheese grits. And this is a great way to start because the very first thing to do is boil some water. And what I note here is that as the pan heats up, the little bubbles that form on the bottom are really evenly distributed all around the bottom of the pan. With other pans, I can often see the shape of the burner in the pattern of the bubbles. So it looks like copper really does evenly distribute heat around the bottom of the pan. Second point here, with stainless steel, Make sure you wait until water is hot before adding any salt, else you can cause pitting in your stainless steel cooking surface. So I get the water boiling, in go butter, salt, and grits, let them cook covered for 15 minutes or so, add some cheese, and these turned out great. Delicious. Do you like those cheese grits? Yes. All right. All right. All right. Next test, we're gonna ratchet it up a bit and go for a bechamel sauce. Now why make a bechamel? For some fancy French dish? No, for real deal homemade mac and cheese for this guy. Start with melting some butter. When the butter is melting and crackling, in goes some flour and a few spices. It's cooking nicely, smells a little like pie dough. When it is cooked a few minutes, I whisk in cold milk for no lumps. Two things to note here. One, as I brought the milk up to a simmer, I stirred often and didn't get any scorching, no hot spots. Two, here is where the hardness of the stainless steel cooking surface might be a better choice than the tin. I wouldn't use a whisk like this in a softer tin lined pan. So I simmer the sauce and let it thicken, in go cheese and other stuff, overcooked pasta it goes, breadcrumbs and cheese on top, into the oven, and how did it turn out? Do you like that mac and cheese? Yes! Now before we get to the biggest cooking test, we made rice and it turned out nice and fluffy. I made a lot more grits. We made hot chocolate for Christmas with no sticking or scorching on the milk. But here we go for the biggest test. My wife used this Moviel saucepan to make peanut brittle. Now making candy is an area where the heat transferability and precision and responsiveness of copper cookware is really supposed to shine through. Now here, my main contribution is staying the hell out of the way and not bothering her with the camera. So she mounted up her candy thermometer, then she heated up corn syrup, sugar, and water, brought it up to heat, and when there's a lot of water in the mixture, the temp stays constant around the boiling point of water. But as some of that water boils away and a thicker syrup is formed, the temperature of the mixture starts to rise. Everything cooked very evenly. She watched as the temperature got up to 238 degrees. In go the peanuts and butter, she stirs and she waits as the temperature continues to rise up to about 290. At that point, off the flame it goes, in goes baking powder and vanilla. She spreads it out to cool, and it's absolutely delicious, and if it looks like my pot belly has grown over the holidays, it has, and here is exhibit A in the list of reasons why. 
And say what you want about high fructose corn syrup. If you mix it with peanuts, butter, and sugar, it is absolutely delicious. Now here's the big kicker on this peanut brittle cooking test. This peanut brittle is for gift baskets that my wife makes at Christmas for friends and neighbors, so she needs a lot of it. So she actually made eight batches in a row. Yes, eight batches of this peanut brittle in a row in this Moviel and the pan performed flawlessly. So that's eight times in a row that this pan was cooked in very precisely. It was heated, cooled, washed, and used again and again. No warping and it performed perfectly. So that's about as good as results from a cooking test can get and it really bumps this Moviel up to kitchen workhorse level performance. That being said, is the value there? Now comparing the Moviel saucepan to the fancy all-clad stainless steel pan, it's definitely more expensive, but at the same time, I think you get a little bit better performance. I think the copper distributes heat better than the stainless steel. It's more responsive, it's heavier, and it feels very solid. It's made of thicker metal, and it has great build quality, and it looks great too. So if those all clads are in the $200 to $300 range and this Moviel is in the $300 to $400 range, especially if you get it as part of a set with a bonus pan, then yes, I think the value is there. But around this price point is about the top of the mark for me. The gap and improved cooking performance of copper tops out eventually, but you can still spend more and more money. At some point, if you were to spend $700 on a copper saucepan, and believe it or not, you could actually do so, you kind of move past value and performance and into the category of luxury items. You're buying fancy, beautiful pots and pans for your kitchen, not necessarily based on performance alone, but beauty as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all like nice things for our kitchens. Next up is the 8-inch frying pan. I started easy with some fried okra, it didn't stick, it slid around when I shook the pan, and it browned up nicely. And once again, the little guy loved it. Any veggie I can get my son to eat is a win, and at least it ain't goldfish. Next up is where minor problems started to pop up. Although I was scared to try a high temp sear test in the copper pan with a steak, I did cook some burgers. The 8 inch size of this pan made me pat out smaller, almost slider sized patties, but I did manage to get an entire pound of beef in it at one time. The burgers cook nicely, they brown well, and release mostly easily. I got more sticking when I tried some breakfast sausage patties. Note here how the patties are not releasing all that well. And for example, I have to use the spatula more than I'm used to with my Moviel carbon steel pan. Also note how it's harder to maneuver the spatula in this 8 inch size pan. It's very small. I moved to an electric cooktop and cooked some more and I'm happy to say that the Moviel worked well on an electric flat top. The patties turned out about the same as they did on the gas and thankfully the pan showed no warping at all. It is a solid well made pan and in this respect this pan seems to be a safer pan to use on an electric flat top than a carbon steel for example. Next up is some light life fake sausage and honestly it tastes about as good as it looks, which is not very good. I'm also concurrently reviewing a Moviel carbon steel skillet and side by side I think these awful sausages cook better in the carbon steel than in the stainless line copper. Carbon steel was much more non-stick. Finally we come to eggs and the proverbial fried egg test. In goes butter, in goes an egg, and boom! If I really pay attention, I can get an egg to slide around in the stainless steel pan. Now I've seen some people claim that they season stainless steel to get eggs to slide around, which I'm skeptical of, but nevertheless, here you can see that you can get an egg to slide on stainless steel with nothing but butter if you pay attention. But again, here I note that with the exact same amount of butter, fried eggs slide around much more easily in my carbon steel pans and I barely have to pay attention, which is really good for me. It's similar with omelets. I can turn out a decent omelet in this pan and I can get it to slide around and flip, but it's just not quite as easy as cooking the same omelet in carbon steel. 
I also get some sticking and food left in the pan, again which I don't get with its cousin, a Moviel carbon steel skillet. With it, I can just wipe it out with a paper towel. So with the frying pan, the copper seems to heat up quickly and transfer heat really evenly, but I think the stainless steel cooking surface on the frying pan doesn't perform quite as well as I'd like to see in a pan that costs this much. Now as a standalone, this pan costs $200 all by itself, and at that price point, I'm not sure that the value is here on the frying pan. I find myself thinking of what else could I get for that same $200. I could get a high quality, all clad stainless steel frying pan and a Mobile carbon steel skillet for the same $200. Cleanup and maintenance. When it comes to cleanup and maintenance, it turns out these copper pans are a little fussy. First, they are not dishwasher safe. You have to clean them by hand. Now, I don't mind that as when I buy nice things, I like to take good care of them. I'm also fairly particular with my pans. My wife would say annoying, but if I clean them by hand, then I know it's done correctly. Second, when it comes to the cooking surfaces, the instructions say not to scrub them heavily. Rather use a little dish soap and hot water and let any cooked on food soak for a while and then it will release. This works well, but note that it takes a little longer to clean these than pans you would normally hit with a scrubby or steel wool. I also found that using a little white vinegar really helps get that weird meat film off the stainless steel surface. With the grits and the peanut brittle, and especially with the sticky bits left by the burgers and sausage, I found that soaking was indeed necessary. Third, the copper itself needs to be babied a little. I often make tea in my stainless steel pans, and no matter what they say, stainless steel ain't stainless. I will generally hit the interior and exterior with some barkeeper's friend and get them all shined back up. You cannot do that with copper, however. You can't use the barkeeper's friend or anything even remotely abrasive on the copper surface. The copper is too soft and you don't want to use anything that's going to put any kind of scratches or swirl marks on it. And now we get to the patina. Now I knew that copper could take on a patina and develop character over time, but being a rookie, I didn't realize just how quickly this can happen. When the two pans first arrived, one was completely shiny, but the other had a spot on it, right out of the box. So I did what I always do. I hastily fired off an angry email, only to regret it later. I swapped emails and pics with the seller. They eventually decided it looked like a little tarnish. They charitably offered to sell me some copper polish and another outrageous $25. And two days later, I had this tiny little jar of copper brill, a copper polish made by Moviel. Now, I think it should cost $1.99 at Walmart, but then again, no one asked me. So I put a little on a sponge, washed the pan, and shined that spot of tarnish right off. So early on, I learned that tarnish can be caused just by air, and that a brand new copper pan may already have a little on it, depending on how long it's been in a warehouse before someone buys it. So let's see how the copper brill works on a big, big mess. Now, after eight batches of that peanut brittle in a row, the outside of my saucepan had drips and spots, and runs and stuff all over it. The surface of the copper really seemed to have changed. And I didn't know if this was normal or if I had done something wrong. So I decided to give it a good scrub with the copper brill. And I think this is actually amazing. Notice how the pan looks beforehand and how much it changes as I rub and scrub with that copper brill polish. It's amazing to see it return to an almost new shine. And I've since learned that some people shine their copper cookware every time they use it. They like to keep it shiny and new looking. Other people never do it and let it really develop a patina and character over time. And now that I know that I can restore the shininess if and when I want to, I think I'm going to be in the camp of letting that patina and character develop. I'm not going to shine it up very often. Now my pan is already well on its way to looking like the copper pan on the cover of one of my favorite Italian cookbooks. And that does make me feel really good because I believe if I have the same or similar high quality cookware, high quality ingredients, then I can learn at home to cook anything as well as any professional chef. Okay, the Moviel Copper 2.6 quart saucepan. I'm gonna give this an unhesitating thumbs up. It's already a workhorse in our kitchen. You saw it with the peanut brittle cooking over and over and over. It performed flawlessly. It's got good heat distribution. Uh, it looks fantastic. Um, the lid fits well and it's what I call a leave-out pan. 
And by that I mean that once it's cleaned up and ready to go again, I leave it on the stovetop. It looks great and it's ready to go for the next time I want to use it. I don't stick it in the cupboard. So this I give an unhesitating thumbs up to. Now for the 8 inch frying pan, I'm going to give it a thumb sideways. Now if it's included in a set and you're not really paying up for it, it's nice to have. There's no doubt about that. However, to go out and spend $200 on this pan all by itself, I don't think I would do that. So when it comes down to it, if you're thinking about buying the full set of copper cookware, I would encourage you to buy a piece of open stock, try a pan or two before spending $2,000 or $2,500. Just make sure you really like it and you really don't mind that extra maintenance with the patina and the cleanup. Now, I'm glad I got these as a set because it gave me a chance to kind of try them out before making that commitment and investment. And what I would have found out had I bought the full set is A, my wife would have killed me. B, I would have been very happy with some of the pieces, but other ones would have been just kind of so-so. I found out that I love the saucepan with lid. I don't care for the frying pan all that much. So I'm glad I got it this way. Okay, if you've enjoyed this review and found it helpful, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Here are some links to some other videos you might find helpful. We're trying to get Twitter and Facebook pages going. If you get a chance, check those out. We've got affiliate shopping links below. Please leave feedback, questions, and comments below the video. I do my best to respond to all of those. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.